Hello and welcome to Mr. How Biology. This YouTube channel is dedicated to helping students achieve the best possible grades in A-level biology. Please comment, like and subscribe if you like this content. Now today we're going to be looking at transport across cell membranes. In particular, diffusion. Simple diffusion. The kind that occurs in air, in liquids, across cell membranes and all that good stuff. Okay, so what is diffusion first of all? Well, diffusion is the net movement of substances from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Now, what do we mean by net? Net means the amount that moves across after we take losses into account. Now, if we look at the diagram in the bottom, we can see that molecules are going to be bouncing across this line in the middle. This pink line here represents the phospholipid bilayer, aka the cell membrane. And the molecules are going to be bouncing across left to right with kinetic energy. Okay, but over time, the net movement is towards equilibrium, is so that we have an equal number either side of the membrane. So it's until a dynamic equilibrium is reached. And I always tell my students, equilibrium, think equal, an equal amount either side. And when we think about net, think about net pay. Your net pay is the amount of pay you get given after tax has been deducted. Okay then, so diffusion. This can occur in gases such as atmospheric air, the, the oxygen that we breathe in, and the nitrogen that's in the air, all kinds of gases are in our atmosphere, argon, carbon dioxide. But diffusion can also occur in liquids. Think about marine ecosystems. There's the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide occurring in oceans and fresh water. Now, simple diffusion is described as a passive process. Now, in A-level biology, you always need to be specific. And what this specifically means is that it doesn't require energy that is released from the hydrolysis of ATP. Never say that it's energy created by the hydrolysis of ATP because that's not right. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It's released. It can just be changed from one form, which in ATP will be chemical, into another, which in the case of diffusion basically won't be necessary. Okay. Now, why do we need diffusion? Well, it's an essential process in all living organisms. We need it to obtain oxygen from the air for aerobic respiration. We need it to release carbon dioxide. And we'll get, go into that a little bit more later. But one thing that is important is the fact that simple diffusion can occur directly through the phospholipids of the cell membrane. It does not require a specific transport protein like some of the cell transport mechanisms we're going to look at in later videos. So be sure to tune in for those. Now here's a little diagram showing the alveoli of the lungs. So you'll breathe air in through the trachea down through the bronchi, through the bronchioles, and it'll end in this alveolar air sac that we can see here. Now, oxygen is going to be diffusing directly through the phospholipid of the cells of the alveolus and the phospholipids of the cells of the capillary. And that's going to allow oxygen to get from the air, from a high concentration gradient to a low concentration gradient into the blood. Okay, remember diffusion is the, the movement of a substance from a high concentration to a low concentration until equilibrium is reached. Now we can see that we've got a blood supply here. So blood is going to be moving that oxygen away from the alveolus and that's going to make sure there's always a higher concentration of oxygen in the alveoli than there is in the blood. So that's going to maintain a concentration gradient and it's going to allow simple diffusion to keep progressing. Now, we've also got carbon dioxide diffusion out of the blood here. OK, now this is really important because carbon dioxide can form an acid in solution and it can be really harmful in high concentrations. So we have to allow or we have to be adapted to facilitate the diffusion of carbon dioxide out of the blood into the alveoli so that it can be expelled via exhalation. Now, how does diffusion work? Well, 
We've mentioned before that it occurs directly across the phospholipid bilayer. Now, break this down. Phospho, because it's got phosphate in there. Lipid, because it's made of fat. Bilayer, think of a bicycle, it's got two wheels. Bilayer means two layers. And we can see that here. We've got our phosphates, which are these circles at the top. And we've got the lipids, which are the fatty acids that we can see coming off from them there. And it's two layers. There's two rows of phospholipids. So that's where we get the name bilayer from. And we can see that small uncharged molecules, or another way of saying uncharged is nonpolar. And I would encourage students to use the term nonpolar. Those nonpolar molecules can get across the membrane directly. And here we've got the extracellular fluid, which basically means outside of the cell. And below we've got the intracellular fluid, the fluid inside of the cell. Think of like an extraterrestrial, you know, ET. It's outside, it's not from that area. Now, higher temperatures speed up diffusion. This gives the molecules more kinetic energy. And by kinetic energy, we mean movement energy. So we can see there that small nonpolar molecules can diffuse directly across the membrane. And I've got a little model of carbon dioxide here. Carbon dioxide is an example of a molecule that can move directly across the phospholipids, and so is oxygen. Examples of molecules or, or ions or, or substances that cannot get across the membrane via simple diffusion are exemplified by water. Water has a positive charge on the hydrogen and it has a negative charge on the oxygen. Now you'll learn that water is what we call a dipole. Di meaning two, pole meaning two poles. So it's got a positive and negative charge and that's going to prevent it from getting across the phospholipids directly. And it means that it requires a specific transmembrane protein. And this transmembrane protein is known as an aquaporin. Now we know that an that aqua, that means water, and pore, think of the pores in your face, they're like little holes, okay? So this water channel here is an aquaporin, and that's going to allow water to move across the membrane without needing to go through the phospholipids. Now glucose, that is too large, okay? Remember, molecules that are either polar or too large cannot get across the phospholipids directly. So glucose requires a transport protein. And we're going to cover more on this when we look at co-transport later. It's a brilliant process that's got some really nice detail to it. And we'll, we'll learn how glucose is transported across that, that phospholipid bilayer, that cell membrane. Now, some other examples of molecules which cannot diffuse directly through the phospholipids include sodium ions. They're positively charged. Potassium ions. Chloride ions with their negative charge. Sodium ions again. Now, I've put it twice because it comes up so often in your studies. Calcium ions. Amino acids, sucrose, glycerol, cellulose, starch, and glycogen. They're all simply too large, but the ones above them have a charge, okay? Now, all of these molecules, ions, atoms, substances, these are ones that you need to get to grips with in the studies of your A-level biology because they're going to come up in many different areas of the specification. So make sure you're familiar with them by the time the exam rolls around and you will be primed and ready to absolutely smash it. Sodium is going to come up in the co-transport of glucose. It's going to come up in nervous transmission. It's going to come up in the co-transport of amino acids. The list goes on. So sodium is a big one. Okay. Now, this is why we call the cell membrane selectively permeable, because it selects via its structure which molecules and ions can get across and which ones cannot. Now, here's a little exam question for you guys, just to see how this knowledge is assessed. Now, we've only learned a small packet of knowledge here, so the, the number of exam questions we can use is quite limited, because biology is very synoptic, means it, meaning it draws on areas from across different topics in a lot of the questions. But here's a nice little example. So, we've got the diagram showing part of a plasma membrane. The arrows show the path taken by sodium ions, and by substance X, 
when they diffuse through this membrane into a cell. Now, substance X goes straight through the phospholipids, just like we saw earlier, whereas sodium ions, which we know are Na+, go through a specialized channel here. And the reason I know that is just because of the content you learn from the specification, okay? Now, the question is, give one property of the molecules of substance X, so this substance here, which allows them to diffuse through the membrane at the position shown, so at this position. So what are the properties? We just want one. What are the properties of substance X? Have a think about that. Now, the answer is the fact that it is lipid-soluble, small, non-polar, or not charged. Now, any of those would get you the mark. The forward slash shows you that any of them would be credited with a mark by AQA. Okay. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if it's been useful to you. And we will see you in the next one. Take care.